This is the Tabernacle Podcast with me, Britton Bishop. Um, I am joined today. Um, we are still live from Camp 23, and I'm joined by the one and only returning guest. He is the family and teaching pastor at Bayview Church, mm-hmm. Andrew Clark. So he's going to be co-hosting today. Um, Adam had a nervous breakdown <laughs> at camp. He's like hiding in his camp. Or, he's somewhere in the mud pit. Yeah, we have he no idea where Adam is. Yeah, he's just in the thick of it. <laughs> had a nervous breakdown. A middle school girl told him he was old and he just lost oh, it. Yeah, it was a mess. So, yeah. was and a mess. we're joined by our Camp 23 um, worship uh, leader, whatever you want to call him. Uh, he is a husband, father, worship pastor, recording artist, guitar player, and King Supreme. No, I'm just kidding. That's a Kent Murphy reference. Uh, <laughs> shouldn't have done that. Uh, Chris Marvin, what's up, bro? <laughs> what's up? What's up? Welcome to it. Uh, so, yeah, he is, uh, what are you for the spark? Just a part of it? I don't know how that I all works. I am the spark. I am the spark. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell them. Make others. sure you trim that out. <laughs> I'm, I'm tagging. I'm posting that. I'm tagging him. <laughs> I am the spark. Uh, uh, it's like it. a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, love it. Uh, oh, so we, uh, yeah, we're at Camp 23, and as, as you can tell, it is Thursday. Um, we're headed home tomorrow, and uh, just slap happy. This episode is brought to you by Mountain Dew Baja Blast. No free shout outs. Taco Bell. That's it. Uh, Perfect. You guys drinking yeah. water because you're bums. Adam was drinking poppy yesterday. You guys ever drink poppy? No. Nope. It's not me. It has apple cider vinegar in it, and oh, he's no. like, it tastes just like orange soda. And I tried it on the episode and made a scene for 15 minutes. That's <laughs> so disgusting. You guys can watch that episode, and it's nah. just me making a scene. Maddie can confirm that was a majority of the episode. But we've been in the mud pit today. They're playing water balloon. Uh, yeah, water balloon. Wa- nuke uh, volleyball. volleyball or something like that. Yep. Um, but overall, man, just been an awesome. This is kind of like the camp update for the parents before we jump into Chris's change life story. But just been yep. an awesome week. Um, just seeing how I many six churches come together. Yeah, uh, I guess seven if you eight if you count the spark, Paul and uh, Olivia. So yeah, just a super like just kingdom centered thing. I think it's been just humbling that reminder of like we're not the only ones doing it. Yeah, there, there are other people in it. Yeah, it's and it it's been awesome to see like yeah we keep seeing like the big C church mm-hmm. like just the fact that like it's it's all in this together mm-hmm. mindset. I think you and I have that similar thought process even when it was coming into planning camp of yeah. just like man life is just better. Mm together yes and it's been fun to see it like actually happening yes. and actually like coming because this is a vision and, you've had for a long time yeah like so part of like what's cool about chris still even being here is i'm i'm pretty sure it was like 2016 if not if not 2017 at the latest was like the first time you came up and led worship at a camp with us and it's been a few years yeah and, <laughs> and, and but to think back to like 2015 was probably the first camp i truly programmed and ran but it was like there's a legitimate conversation with the volunteers at the time of like man one day it'd be so fun to just get other churches together mm-hmm. like just to see that happen especially like in northern michigan but and i don't know you know you being from kenosha wisconsin like i don't know if that's like churches doing things together is like around like mr great lakes yeah, yeah. Like a Holding normal normal thing, but Northern Michigan, that just hadn't no, been the vibe. Like, And it was never like this overt, like me versus you <clears throat> mentality, but there definitely wasn't like a... Just like a mind your own. Yeah, it was just kind of do your yeah. thing. And so even the conversation with other churches of like, hey, you want to be a part of this? Like, oh, no, we have this camp. Oh, we're doing our thing. And so it's just been cool to see now six, seven, eight years later, all of a sudden there is six six, seven churches from the Northern Michigan area. Like now let's do this. Yeah. He met and a bum that was like, Oh, you already <laughs> planned the camp. <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> Say less, bro. It. I'll bring my kids to a camp. You already planned. I'm about it. Yeah. Uh, so, so it just, it, yeah, it's been a dream come true, honestly. Yeah, like, been. um, and this is our third year doing it together. Third year. Yeah. yeah with us. And you know, um, AJ Adam. Yeah. Four and of it's us. grown. It's yeah. grown pretty good. And, uh, even, for me, because I've done it so many years now, um, I, well, number one, I love coming back here. I block out the calendar now because yeah. I'm like, this is like a piece of, you know, I'm kind of, I feel like adopted into the family that you guys have up here now. Yeah, sure. and, uh, but like what's pretty awesome from like a, an outsider a little bit is just seeing like these relationships grow, seeing you guys' relationship grow. And I'm like, 
man, if the church can get a hold of what this is, it's like, like a, a, like if this could actually like be normal, mm. like especially in this area, like the church can be unstoppable. Mm. We can kind of mm. like not worry about like, oh, am I going to lose someone to so-and-so's church? Yeah. You know what I mean? And be like, oh, wait, 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 we're all, we're all of Jesus. We all want to see like this area, like one. hundred yeah, percent. And uh, then like, you can sort of like, let those walls come down and yeah, like, let friendships happen yeah. and like not compete against each other. And like, all of a sudden you have like a family that yeah. meets uh, maybe in some different buildings yeah. in the area, yeah. but it's like a family. And it's pretty rad to yeah, see. It is. No, I'm, so. I'm curious too, just from you guys, cause I think we've found a realm. We'll pull on this thread for a minute, but like, I don't know, in like the world of like just church partnership and like churches working together, um, one, what do you think of the things that are necessary for that to flourish? And then what do you think are some of those, like you're saying, like those like walls that people put up or something like that, that maybe you find, cause I've got some thoughts, but I'd love to hear from you guys. Like in that realm of like partnering with other churches, partnering with other like Christ centered organizations, like how do you get outside of like what you're just doing and make it a kingdom thing? Like what are the things you've seen work well and things you've seen that are like, that sometimes when you see that, cause I'm sure like when traveling and doing music and stuff like that, like you see a lot of that too. So I'm just curious. Yeah. Well, um, I'll just say I'm not a lead pastor, so I don't have to carry the weight of the mm. big decisions for right. people. So I'm speaking from that kind yep. of place. I respect, uh, the men who, who hold those weight. It's a different kind of weight they've got to carry. So sure. no judgment towards anything, but I would say this. Um, I think, um, there's a lot of churches, it seems, um, that can be so focused on their own people, and rightly so. They need to be focused on the people that God's given them. But um, sometimes it can be easy to lose focus of like, hey, we're trying to win. Mm. It's not like my building need, needs to win the area, right. you know what I mean? Um, and um, unfortunately, I think I, I've definitely experienced um, just the fear of um, almost like, well, if—, if if they find out that this group over here is pretty cool, I'm going to lose them. Right. You know what I mean? And some of that kind of stuff. And I think that fear is real. Mm. I think it's tied into um, a little bit of like, well, pride for, for some individuals because we just have to be careful that we're not building our own little kingdoms right. but calling it Christ's. Yeah, yeah. Um, easier said than done, man. Right. Um, but, yeah, I've seen some of that. And then I've seen... I've seen a, a few places that I see what what I'm experiencing with you guys, where there's true friendship, true partnership, true um, kind of like hands on together. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like both of your hands are dirty yeah. in, in the mix of this thing. And I, man, the potential for this generation to like not you know, maybe be loyal to, to a local community, but also be loyal to the bigger community, that's yeah. going to change. A, that can change a city. And if you can change a city, you can change an area. And if you can change an area, you can change a state. And, yep. yeah. You know, so yeah. anyway, props to both of you guys. Props to um, even the head pastors that you guys are are, are partnering with that, yeah. that allows some mm -hmm. of this to happen because it doesn't happen everywhere, For unfortunately. Sure. Yeah, and I would... I would say something similar where it's like, and again, not being in the seat of a lead pastor and there's, there's just a different pressure and responsibility there, obviously, but the support and almost like the, I don't, I wouldn't call it like a spiritual maturity, but like a spiritual confidence of just like what, what it is to like be a leader in the realm of the church and to see it as like, you know, as a shepherd, you have your flock, like you have people who are just going to be naturally in your space, but when I walk out the doors of that building, like I don't take off the name tag of pastor or shepherd or any of that kind of stuff. And so I think what tends to happen is like, we either take that off and now we're just running a business mm -hmm. and business grows by the numbers. And so we become, that's really the word attractional and some yeah. of that comes into play. But like, I think the idea of whatever space I walk into, like I can make an impact in, then I'm not worried about like if, if I'm, I'm drawing people to me, I'm just more worried about our people seeing Jesus yeah. and, and I don't need, I don't need to be validated because I spent a lot of time in my life being validated by like affirmation mm. and numbers and like 
all that to where you get to the end where you're like, man, this means nothing yeah. if all these people are just coming to hang out, but they're not learning about Jesus. That's so good. And so when I'm in this space and there's 175 kids here or whatever it is, like I, I struggle sometimes because I'm like, I don't seek out m my students per se. I'm right. just like, I'm in the role of all these students are here. Yep. So awesome. 100%. And this, the, I'm glad these students are here to hear about Jesus, no yep. matter what church they're coming from. And, and I'm trusting that they're being discipled and they're being trained up in those churches. The same way I am I am confident in like, when I interact with them, like hopefully they're gonna see Jesus. And I think just that mentality of like, our place and space that we, we really can make the biggest impact matters. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that is important, but having leadership that trusts and, and is confident in themselves and confident in the Lord. And then that trickling down to, I think us in the same way, being confident in like, I'm supposed to be a shepherd. I'm supposed to be a pastor. That means whoever I'm coming in contact with, I can make an impact in that. And ultimately Christ will hopefully make an impact in that. Yeah, for sure. No, and I think too, like something I know, like we've talked about a ton, is like we've both failed mm -hmm. and realized it's it can't be about me. Mm. And so I think that in that failure and that realization of like, I just got to point these kids to Jesus, you start to realize the less it's about me, the more partnership makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that that like sometimes like it's either like that's that humility through humiliation at yeah. times that God <laughs> uses to bring you to a place of like, man, I need other people. Like I need to be in community. Yeah with other people. Mm -hmm. And I think too, like uh, something we say often um, at the tab, like pod family, you guys have heard this multiple times from the platform. It's like, we're not the church for everybody. Mm -hmm. And like, I understand that there might be kids that come from our Buckley campus and connect with a leader from Bayview and they live in the realm of like in between. And mm -hmm. it's like, Oh, you'd love to go to church there. And you dread coming to ours go to the one you'd love to go to. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't have to just be that because you came here once as a first time visitor, like find the place that you feel like God can grow you the most. And that doesn't yeah. mean people need to church hop and stuff like that. I think at times there's a call to commitment and everything like that. But for students specifically, it's like go where you want to be. Like mm -hmm. that's the same way. Which Bible translation is the best? The one you'll read. Like yeah. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I think it's the same way. Like, are they preaching Jesus? Everybody at this camp, obviously, like, is a Christ-centered Bible teaching gospel church. So it's like, I don't care where you go. Yeah, I just don't. And it's just like, so I think those times, like, how many kids do you have? It's like, well, how many people do you want me to call before I give you our numbers? Yeah, because I've got we've got a lot of kids. Like I, I literally like I think that you have been a youth pastor to a lot of my students. Like I mm -hmm. think about. One individual last year where it's like, I'm looking at this kid, I've had 10, 15 conversations, and then it's like, hey, Drew, like, I've talked to this kid. Can you go talk to him? Like, he needs to hear it from somewhere else. Yeah. You're not his youth pastor. You might not ever see him again. And bro takes 30 minutes to go pour into a kid that he hasn't talked to since then. But it's like, these they're none of our kids they're christ's yeah and so it's like we're just going to give them to him yep. and trust that we can just be a part of what he's doing so 100 i love that yeah and uh so yeah chris um how long have you been a christian man man first of all where are you where, where are you from <laughs> i know you ain't from kenosha <laughs> um what was i gonna say <laughs> that's for you Brett. uh let's go um so so listen up pops so more more Oklahoma than anywhere else probably. <laughs> I I lived a lot of places. I hopped around a little bit, you know, growing yeah. up. But um, were you a military kid? I wasn't. Okay. No, I just grew up. Um, so my parents were were not together. Mm -hmm. um, so there's um, I'd live with my mom. I live with my dad. Then I'd live with a set of grandparents. I'd live yeah. with a different grandparent. So I kind of switched around. Mm -hmm. Then people would move, and I'd do the switcher again yeah. a little bit. But more Oklahoma City than anywhere else. So, so if you were watching a college football game, who would you? Oh, you, ah, of oh, course, Boomer, Boomer. <laughs> Although my heart, yeah, I'm a little salty uh -oh. at USC right now, but oh, I don't know I, who. We don't I'll, have to. Yeah. I, don't, I don't. I can't. I'm uh, just Jordan. You understand? My buddy just slammed on his brakes. <laughs> so I'm with you. Okay. I'm with you 100. percent We don't have to go there. All the right. futures. The future. You know. Oh yeah. You I know. know but, I know. Uh, Gabe. Uh, you're listening to this in Thailand, you know, we had one of our missionary partners come and he sits down, we've met him once and he's like, yeah, I'm a Oklahoma fan. And John's like, you gotta be kidding. We like ripped Oklahoma football for like 15 minutes of the podcast. And John's like, 
he's just flew here from Thailand to be on the podcast, and you're talking about OU oh, football. You. That's amazing. <laughs> yes, so, that's, that's so a connection. Uh, that's, so bounced around, um, kind of like parent child of divorce stuff like that, or. So was that like, would you ever like, was there like a home when you were at it, you went to church? Like you were that, like somebody that was pointing you to Jesus or? E, well, um, you know, Oklahoma, well, you're from right, Oklahoma. Yeah. So that's like Bible belt buckle, you yeah. know what I mean? Or, you know, different plate, different states will claim that, but whatever there's, you know, that's like Southern Baptist yep. mm. on every corner. False so Creek. Funny, so False Creek, man, <laughs> is huge. So um, even before I moved up North, um, this is how ignorant I am. I I thought that like the Catholic Church, people are gonna judge me so hard right now. Bro, I thought the Catholic Church was like like historic, bro. Because I I never came across like a like a functioning Catholic bro. Church. So I was like, oh yeah, the Godfather movies, <laughs> bro. Yes. First, so I went to college in Kansas. I'll never forget the like cathedral in the plains. It's like this massive cathedral in Western Kansas. Yeah. And I've got some buddies like, hey, do you want to go to church? And I'm like. Sure, I'll go to church. We go to a Catholic church, and I'm like, "What is this? I thought this was like a thing that's just like in like that happened that was over and is now <laughs> happening in movies." Like, yeah, because you're in the south, dude. it's just you're in everybody's south, Baptist. Different. They just name it something different, <laughs> man. So I, so I live in Kenosha right now. Mm. It is like heavy Italian. Yeah. Like my wife's Italian, and I, when I first got like came into that town, I was like, "What are all these museums?" <laughs> Oh, man. Anyway, um, yeah. So, anyway, Oklahoma. Uh, they, it's like. Not a deep uh, <laughs> church history in Oklahoma. Oklahoma. It's like Southern Baptist, yes. like, capital, maybe. Through I don't know. So, um, anyway, so I grew up, um, like, everyone knows mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, I, everyone knows the name. And um, I went to a really, like, pretty big high school. So, there's a lot of. Uh, you know, a lot of people go to church, but that didn't necessarily translate. And then when I was with, um, and my mom, she did go to church, bounced around from church to church, not really like loyal to us, hmm. any specific church. So this is kind of, yeah. Anyway, all that to say, so I went to some youth groups, but it was not like a, it was like a piece of culture. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then when I lived with my dad or my dad's side of the family, they're uh, Nazarene through and through. And uh, so that was just quite different than what yep. um, from my mom's side. So, mm. and, and on that side, you know, I'm sure there's some rock and Nazarene churches out there, but the ones that I was a part of were, were pretty like, um, there was, I was, I was like the only person under the age of 40, I felt like, you yeah. know, and, and like, that's not great for like a 13 year old, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm. So that's just the kind of uh, environment. So, so I, I was exposed to, mm. to, um, Christian culture, I could say that. Yeah. But then, like your your local drug dealer will be in youth group with you. You know what right, I'm saying? Yeah. And like waiting for you. Yeah. Um, because so it was just like it's just where you were. It's just where you were. It's like a social mm. yeah gathering. Especially it was that like 90s. Yeah. Late, yeah. 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 So it's yep. just peak of attractional church movement and all it, that. Yeah. It was totally that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was it was like, are we going to the party? Or are you going to go to uh you know such and such youth group? Well, we're gonna do the youth group and then go to party. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was, and um, there's a lot of awesome stuff happening. Hundred um, percent. But I wasn't experiencing that necessarily personally. What was like, kind of like as you like, if you can even remember thinking back to that time, like as you're stepping into those spaces and like doing those things, like do you remember like where your head was at? Like maybe as somebody's like preaching the gospel or like presenting this was just like checked out or like where were you at with that? You know, um, I don't, I don't want to put too much blame on. Um, on, on my folks, but just seeing like my mom, she, she got married a few times. Um, and, and my dad, uh, and how like pieces of religion was like piece of their life, mm -hmm. but not necessarily, um, I want to be kind here, but, but yeah. maybe not transformative of their life. I think that kind of like jaded me. Mm. And so like, I, I did, I was not impacted by Jesus yet. You know what I mean? So I was in the building and I was exposed to a culture. But I had not, I just wasn't born again yet. Yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, again, there's some good things happening, but, but I, yeah, that happened a little later. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. No, that's cool. That's, 
it's good because I think like there's some like there's a there's I mean you hear the statistic of like ninety percent of young adults stop going to church when they leave their parents' home, and yeah. I think that like that aspect that you're talking about of like there's a lot of people that like follow the religion but haven't like experienced the fullness of like the transformative power of what the gospel can do, mm. not just in your life but in the, their family's life, and so I think that that's like interesting because it's as parents are listening to this and stuff like that like it's just like there's a not a weight or a response like but there's like an urgency to like not just letting this be like a game that you play or something like a thing that you a badge that you wear or whatever it might be and i'm not i don't want to put words in your mouth but i think just that aspect of like showing your kids like no this is more than just like a thing we do on sundays and i think that's something that you do really well now as you bring your kids out on the road like i see you with <laughs> the coliseum and stuff like that because it's like this is church too yeah. Like, sure, they're doing a word search, but, like, getting to see, like, your two littles in there, and it's, like, teaching them and showing them, like, this is the fullness of what God has for your life. And so I think that's something that's really cool about you that I've uh, seen. Well, thanks. So. Yeah. I think, uh, well, uh, our life is pretty unconventional, and so there's some pros and cons to that. But one of the things that we I want to try at, or fumbling forward, I think every parent fumbles forward. No one's got it together. But one of the things that I want to make sure is, like, Hey, Christ is infiltrates all of our life. Yeah. And some of that is super fun stuff that sort of doesn't matter. Right. And some yeah. of it's massively serious, but he's lord over all of it. Yeah. You mm. know what I mean? And if if I can I'm not the best at this. We're all learning in this, but like if I can just if me and Ro, it's my wife, obviously you guys know, but they don't. Um <laughs> if we <laughs> I don't know. Have you met Ro? Oh, anyway, <laughs> if we can if we can work and learn how to display that in all of our decisions, and if they can at least see it that 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 we mean we mean it, we're trying to outlive yeah. it at the best we can, you know. Mm. Um, then um, hopefully that's a legacy that they're going to carry on further than us. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and that's maybe what was missing, if I could say it that way. That's what I didn't see. As it, you know, growing up in this church culture, yeah. I was like, whose faith is actually real? Yeah. Who, who like loves Jesus like after they're done speaking on stage? You know, that, that kind of a thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, and I'm sure I came across people that did, but for sure. But I know I'd, I came across people that didn't. Right. That's yeah. all. I'm curious, like, for, and this is maybe could be a question for both of you guys as you're both dads, but like, what are some like practical, cause we have a lot of parents that listen to this podcast as well. So like, what are some like practical, maybe like steps or things you've put in place, like in your marriage or in like the way you guys operate as like a family unit where your kids are seeing like that aspect of like, it's, this is all kingdom living. It's not just when we're in this building or doing this thing. Like what are some practical things you guys really try to do with your kids to make sure they're aware of that? And I know your kids are younger. But. It was just interesting because I, I, obviously I grew up in a different space with my, you know, my father being a pastor. And so like hearing both of you, I mean, I know your story and then just hearing you share like faith being like a function of maybe your parents, but not like a, a full on, like, you know, really sharing it. Um, it was just interesting because as I was sitting here thinking and listening, it's like some of the more impactful times, I think we're actually seeing my dad in a camp setting like this and like really just leading the crazy like fear factor eating contests with the teens and they just doing crazy stuff that was just like, Oh, essentially like, Oh, this is church too. Like, Oh, this is fun. Like this, there's the fun aspect of it. Um, I don't know. That was just, really, I, I just, it's interesting when you talk about like actually seeing it versus like just hearing it or being just something that happens. And you talk about like to parents, like the ability to be involved and it's not just a checkbox, but actually like, you know, infiltrate your whole life. Like there's just so much value in that even as a kid. Um, well, yeah, I just, that was wild. Anyways, um, <laughs> I think for us at least, like for Nicole and I, um, speaking like we have a three-year-old and a one-year-old, so it is a little bit different, but like, um, trying to just bring them to things, almost using you and Ro as an example of like your kids come with you when they can and like. Nicole was up here at camp. She's actually coming back today with the kids and like, just like, just kind of going and having them be at things and being a part of things and not trying to like, even if it's stressful sometimes, or even it seems like, oh, this, 
again, Lainey's one. Does she even actually care about this? But like just having her in that space and around people who like, we know God's real to them. Yeah. And like just trying to have them in those, that in our community, basically. Yeah. Um, that's probably been one of the more practical things we've done is like just trying to like have them be around us when it makes sense. Yeah. But, um, and hopefully that we're beginning to see Liam and some of the language he uses and at my three-year-old and like the things he says and the people he talks about and the people he talks to. And that's been, that's been cool to see that start to translate a little bit. Yeah. Great. I mean, super good question. Um, um, that's hard to answer. Honestly, I think one of the biggest things I think is just, um, all those like little decisions and big decisions, like, um, making sure our kids know, like, like we're not making all of our decisions based on what's even best. I know this sounds funny, but what's even best um, for our path necessarily? Like we're like our life is not our own. So like we're gonna talk to our leaders. We're gonna like like our life. You know, trying to trying to trying to outwork what we're actually saying from like a stage. I don't want like my kid to see. <clears throat> excuse me me saying something from a stage and then go, but you don't do that. Mm -hmm. I, man, what a heartbreaking thought to me. So I'm like, no, like my life is like, I want to pour out and I do, this is the deep things in me. I actually do want to pour out my life um, in a way where at the end of it, I, I hear well done, mm. good and faithful servant. I want that, you know, I think that's good to want that. Mm -hmm. And so like, what does that mean? Well, that means making, sometimes making decisions that the world would say, why wouldn't you take that opportunity? But, and you go, well, because I, I pray mm. and I, as best as I know how to follow God, I feel like he's speaking this, mm. which might not look, be smart. Yeah. And I'm trying to explain some, some of those decisions sometimes, you know, my kids quite, aren't quite old enough to talk through everything, but they are old enough to catch quite a lot now, you know? And, and for even my daughter, I can tell that there's a, I'm trying to protect her from the pressure of her not, um, she sees her mommy and her daddy doing stuff um, on stages and, you know, sometimes in front of little crowds, sometimes in front of big crowds. I can see that like, unintended pressure of her needing to be something. Mm. So so part of me also is like, hey, no. No, 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 no. What you need to be is exactly what God is like. Let, let's learn his voice together first. Mm -hmm. That's all that's all we want to do. Yeah. Like I'm not trying to make you into the next anything. In fact, I don't want you to try to become something that, you know, to impact the world if you're not going to be living under the grace of of God to do that because that'll crush you. Yeah. That weight will crush you. So uh, anyway, again, we're just fumbling forward. Yeah. But the beautiful thing is we don't have to do it in isolation. Yeah. We have great church family. We have great church leadership that we can bounce things off of. And and in some ways the church helps us parent as well. Mm. Does that yeah. make sense? It makes a village. It does. Yeah. And, and like who you're close with, like – makes a big impact on who your kids see. Yeah. So so yeah. our closest friends are people who are running after Jesus as well. So it's not just that we have to be the only example, which I'm really glad about. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, love that. Yeah, that's good. So, so kind of went to church, did the stuff. Yeah. And then, uh, so where would you say, like, things started to shift gears where you, like, started to realize, like, man, you know what? Like, maybe there might be some, like, truth to this bro it happened in a moment yeah so um i went to a um there's this massive massive youth group um baptist youth group <laughs> yo baptist yes um they're doing this massive winter retreat thing um and um i had a buddy and he was like you should come i bet they're still using the same logo today <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know what? It probably wasn't cool, and now it's, like, super cool. Right. And they have no idea. <laughs> it's like, 90s are back. Um. Anyway, 
Yeah. Sorry. Um, so, so I was like, yeah, cool. Cause I had some other friends and, um, that were going to go to this, I mean, just massive thing. And they were bringing some, some recreational activities that might not be approved for church. Um, <laughs> scenarios they're like but this is such a massive group that we're like the plan was to kind of sneak away um you know and have some sinful times <laughs> and then sneak back in because they're like the leadership was pretty loose they just wanted you to go get that kind of a thing so um, nothing like camp 23 <laughs> yeah, nothing no, like nothing. that this is totally different <laughs> absolutely uh yeah. that was a different thing <laughs> Uh, That's not happening. Different times. Here. Ever. So um I so I went and uh I I'm, I'm I never get sick, but all of a sudden I just got like like I felt nauseous. I was like, what the heck? So all my buddies that went they just went off and I was like, I gotta stay back. So I stayed in my bunk. By the way, I don't know anyone from this group mm. except for um the the ones that went <laughs> off, right? <laughs> So it's not like I know the youth pastor. I don't, to this day, I don't know who's leading this thing. Hmm. I don't know. There's going to be so many kids that say that when they get home. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, long story short, right? So I'm sick in this like cot thing, right? Uh, This like cot, this bunk, whatever. I'm like, this sucks. I gotta go. (laughs) No one's in this place. I'm just all alone. And I kind of start feeling better, a little bit better. So I'm like, I just got to get up and walk around totally alone. And um, I can hear music. Um, so I'm like, oh, I'm going to go check that out. So I, I was, I've was, i always loved music. I've always been, uh, I've played music for such a, since I was young. So I was like, I'm going to go check this out. I walked in to this worship time and it was like a crappy band. Like, I, I just remember being so unimpressed <laughs> except for I walked into the room and I was like smacked with the presence of God, mm. something absolutely undeniable, mm. undeniable. I was like something I'm experiencing something I've never, uh, I've never experienced. And right there, I just went on my knees again. I didn't know anyone. No one prayed for me. No one said, repeat after me. Mm. I gave my, my life to Christ and no one knew I was, like there was no altar call. It was just people singing. And all I knew was the authenticity of Jesus. Mm. So like, I didn't have the right even language, if I could say it that yeah. way, to like pray the the right prayer. But I gave my life to Jesus yeah. for sure in wow. that moment. Just knew something of the the reality. And if I could say it this way, it's like he gripped me mm. all of a sudden. It's like... I, that's the only way I know how to describe it. I just knew a grip and I was like, you're real. Mm. Okay. Whatever you want. Mm. That was my personal response. If I can say it that way, I wandered into a worship time, mm. just wandered in and mm. it was real. That's, that's what hit me so, awesome. so hard. So cool. How like personal God can be with like that stuff. Like he knows you clearly, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. he knew, where you needed to be, like, where your heart and, like, your mind and, like, how he, because, like, it's just, he knows you Mm. and, like, how personal he was in that, like, I want to be everything Mm. and this is a space where I'm going to call. So I just love just how personal he is. I think that's one of those, like, this week and even that story, dude, like, such a testimony and it takes me back to, like, the, like, where David talks about restore to me the joy of my salvation I think sometimes as we get older, we get jaded and we get, we have opinions and all this <laughs> stuff. And it's like, sometimes it's like, man, like you said it like unimpressive, but man, the spirit of God was there. Mm. And it's like, there's joy in that space and all that. So I love that. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. yeah. Did you, well, what was, so what was the next steps then for you? Like you've, you've kind of made this personal decision and not in, you know, maybe a typical way we would think about it like did you just kind of go on doing your thing or was it like there was some legitimate like aggressive turn in the other direction yeah what that look like that's great um so um i um i love that i can um just truly say 
I've never had like a, a point in my life where I've had like a backsliding mm-hmm. kind of moment. I knew a real change that yeah. day, that night. Um, it was like, you know, that, you know, scripture talks about we're like new creations. Like I felt it like mm-hmm. on the yeah. inside, but I, I, um, my, my home life was a little bit, it was a little unstable, a little, um, it was a little rough. So it's not like I had, um, and I didn't really have like a, a youth pastor or anything. I didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I went back and I was like, what do I do? Mm. What do I do? So, uh, about a, I just didn't know. Yeah. And it sounds funny because the, the culture down there is so like church. Yep. It is so church, but I was like, I don't want that. I need like whatever this real thing, whatever this authentic, this, this, I need this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where do I go? So anyway, the same group went to like this giant, um, it was like a, a conference yeah. um, about it was a big missions push conference. About a month later, I was like, yeah, I'll go to that. I'll go, you know, um, as the next sort of like thing that I was like, can I, can I go to something like that? Um, and I'll, I'll try to, I'll try to make this fast, but like, um, basically I went to this conference, like got hit with the presence of God Oh, this huge stadium. Everyone is at Oral Roberts, <laughs> <laughs> um, huge stadium of people just worshiping. I'm like, Oh, what is this? Yeah. I'm like, God, I don't know how to hear your voice. How do I like be directed by you? How, how does that work? You know, I'm having like these like very elementary and yet profound big at that big time. questions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think no matter where we're at in our walk, I mean, that's kind of a good question to be like, how do you, how do you want to speak to me? Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, how, how old were you at like in this, at this time? Yeah, I was, 37. I was, <laughs> I was 19. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, last year, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so, so this is what I did. I was like, I was like, all right, God, I don't know how to hear you. Mm-hmm. So, what I'm gonna do is so they're doing all those missions yeah. push, right? They're like, if you feel called to missions, I was like, I don't know what that means, but cool. And I was like, God, if you want me to, like, I don't know how to hear you. So, what I'm gonna do is I'll go to this like little missions thing, I'll pick out the most crazy thing. And if it's if it's you, then you'll make it happen because I don't have a, a set of parents that are gonna pay for it. I don't have money to pay for it. But like, hey, this, if this is you, so I picked out this mission trip to Nepal, and they were like specifically like, if you're a new Christian, this is not the trip for you. <laughs> I was like, is it the most expensive? I'm gonna do it, guys. To this day, I do not know. How money ended up in my bank account? I worked at Sonic hey, Drive-In. Shout out, Sonic. Did you roller skate? Uh, no. Okay. I did not do that. Bro, I love Sonic so much, bro. Those that slushy <laughs> life is where it's at. The cherry limeades, cherry limeades, man. Bro, yes. <laughs> It'll change you. You know. I, I know. Been in camp? Uh, yes. Fall camp, bro. That Sonic run is heavenly. Just think, I just watched you have a moment. Yeah, <laughs> it was deep. The, the food, camp food the for four good. days. What do you want from me? The food's great. But something about that fountain drink. Oh. That fountain like, drink game is. Like 280,000 different <laughs> combinations. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Dude, I got to go to Westco. What do you want from me? <laughs> right. Son- <laughs> Sonic. Sonic, man. So Miss good. It so much. <laughs> just, okay. <laughs> Wait, yeah, just, this is complete oh, just crises. So you, you worked at Sonic <laughs> and went to Nepal? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, how much yeah. was it? Do you remember how much the trip was? It, it was, uh, it was almost five grand. It was, it was for something. And, like, I had no that money. That happening at Sonic. No, yeah, <laughs> no, no, and um, yeah. So I don't, I don't know how it happened. Wow. Um, awesome. I don't know, but it changed the whole trajectory of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was there with people that were just on fire, mm-hmm. and I was just like eyes wide open, you know, like wow. whoa, what is this? And people were preaching the gospel, and like it was not 
legal to actually preach the gospel at that time. Maybe it's still, still, still not. Right? Yeah. And so we got arrested, you know, a, a few times, um, but we were Americans. So they're like, they wanted us to stay and like spend money. I'm yeah. sure, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, but we got even warned, like if you, if we catch you one more time, like you're going to have to go, wow. that kind of stuff. I was like, this is wild. <laughs> this is just wild. I remember like praying, like, like near like these big Buddhist um, or, or Hindu uh, like holy places yeah. and stuff. And like, you could do, like feel the, just feel the the place, you mm-hmm. know, and like, all right, guys, we're just gonna start praying. And you just feel something different, mm-hmm. and then like, hey, go share Jesus. Like, uh, I barely know Jesus, but okay. But then I'm seeing people getting born again. I'm like, this is rad. Yeah. This is amazing. And I was just inspired by people that were living out their faith. How long was that? Like, post that little like winter camp thing. You yeah, so that winter thing happened in January, and this, uh, then that that conference happened at the end of January, and the actual trip happened in June. So it's like six months. Yeah, yeah. he's in Nepal getting arrested. <laughs> <laughs> but is- uh, and 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 then I was like, I can't go back home. Mm. Like I mm. have no, uh, I need. I just need family that, or family wouldn't have been the term I used. I need people that are, that, that know how to live for Jesus. I don't have it around me. Mm. So like I went to, I moved down to Texas, did this like internship with the same group, um, down there. And, um, yeah, I stayed there for a year and then I was like, I can't go back to Oklahoma. So I just moved out to California with a couple guys just because I didn't know what to do. Right. I was still so like, I don't know how to hear his voice, but I kind of know how to hear his voice. This yeah. is kind of me uh, at the time, you know what I mean? And like, anyway, yeah, this is this was my life. And I was just like, <laughs> I was just a musician, like mm. doing random random gigs all over the place, but like like searching after Jesus. You know? Did it click like, and maybe it did immediately, but like was there a part that clicked of like, man, maybe I can do like music and serve and follow Jesus with this gift? Um, and like, if so, when? Yeah. Uh, so I, I was doing music before, right. Uh, before I got born again. So, uh, and ironically, I was actually a part of a, a, a group um, of killer players. And this guy who like heads this group kind of like, he, I think he's like, saw something in me. and was like, wanted to bring me along. Super nice. And, um, but a lot of what we did, we we would go out and play, like at Christian mm. like conferences and stuff like that. I'm not even born again. Mm-hmm. This is hilarious. Like I look back and I'm like, what is wrong with this guy? Did he not like? Why did he ha- have me come out anyway? Um, and then I would play in in some of the the bars downtown. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I was already doing music, right. I guess. So when I got born again, I at first I was like, I guess I can't do music anymore. Mm. You know what I mean? But but it didn't take long t- for someone to be like, Hey, uh, we need a someone. Do you do you know anyone? I'm like, well, I could step in or whatever. And then for this mission organization, I started. I was I was playing for them like pretty quickly. Yeah. Like behind a different worship leader, I was like, I could never do that. But I I can help that person do their thing. Yeah. So that's kind of how I thought of myself. Not like a worship guy, but like a musician that can help the the real guy. Yeah, that's how I sure. felt. Yeah, 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 you know yeah. what I mean? I was like, if that's my place in in life, I just want to like, that's what I'll do. Yeah, cool. So anyway, yeah, that's how it started. Um, yeah. Where, when did you meet Ro? Yeah. So, uh, um, so she's from Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Uh, a buddy of mine went up to the church that we're a part of. Um, I wasn't a part of it yet, obviously. He's like, hey, is the guy I used to, I lived in California with, one of the guys, he's like, you got to check this place out. I was like, um, okay. Because I totally like had <laughs> zero concept of like a, like being loyal to a, a local body. I was like, I'm just going to every church I know how, you know yeah. what I mean? That's just how I lived life for a while. I was like, okay, cool. So I came up and visited him. He's a good buddy. I haven't seen him in a while. I didn't know Wisconsin was like a real place. <laughs> 
Dude, that's an Oklahoma thing. Like, I legitimately just don't think anybody teaches you, like, that there's other places. They're just ideas. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, once you get above the Mason Dixon, it's like, is it Canada? I had no idea what know. was past Illinois. This is all a concept. It was literally <laughs> like St. Louis, Missouri, and Narnia. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Great Lakes, is that where the Eskimos are? <laughs> People live in igloos there, don't they? I thought that... Like, I don't want to go there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, so, anyway, I, w- I came up to visit my buddy, and then I stayed for the Sunday morning. And man, I was just floored by the presence of God in this church. So much so that I was like, sweet, I'm, I'm moving here. I was such a <laughs> vagabond back then. I packed up everything I owned in this, like I drove a 1988 Ford Bronco, rusted out, <laughs> like falling apart. I threw everything I owned into that bad boy and drove it to Wisconsin and it pretty much like died <laughs> like almost didn't make it so yeah so so anyway that's where i met her met okay. her at that church and i was like so move from california to wisconsin i with a stop back in oklahoma so i came gotcha. back to oklahoma for a few months gotcha um yeah moved up there and awesome wow. yeah so how long have you been there now oh gosh um that was oh four okay so been there a minute yeah so I've been in Wisconsin longer than any other state. So it's home. Life. So I'm basically, I'm Wisconsin. I'm a northerner now. Yeah. Dang it. Yes. Dang yeah. it. <laughs> but, what uh, was it? But I miss Brant, Brahms and Del Rancho. And, <laughs> what a burger. Oh, what a burger at 3 a.m. There's nothing like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm so happy. Have you ever right had now. like Jack in the Box tacos? They're so terrible. <laughs> But if it's super late at night, it's like the best thing you've ever. So good. <laughs> yes, that is literally the green room here. Like yep. just loading it up with this crap. It's like combos. <laughs> I don't eat combos. But at two a.m. laying it in my bed at camp, I mean combos off my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. So you move. I gotta know though, because Andrew told his like, what was that process like? Was it like you know what? Like I'm gonna. Did you see her? And you're like, are you new? Is it like a friendship that <laughs> yeah, flourished? Man. I know you well enough to know you probably were awkward at some point. Oh, I'm sure I was. I was terrible. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you'll hear it. Okay, so um, so I, um, my history with females was not the most wholesome. Right. So I was like, listen, I'm not, I'm done messing around. I don't want to do anything. Like, um, so I kind of went a- extreme a different way. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to, I'm like going to learn how to live like pure. Yeah. Like, and, and, um, so I was kind of, I was almost like afraid mm-hmm. to like, to that. even think that way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, I don't trust myself. Kind of, you know I remember I mean? when I first became a Christian, I started dating this girl. We dated for like nine months. I never hugged her because <laughs> I didn't think it was allowed. <laughs> Uh, it's like hope's favorite. That is story. amazing. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so okay. So I met Ro and I was like, hey, but nah, but hey, <laughs> and um, and um, we uh, we became super good friends. I mean, we yeah. hung out with uh, like similar friend, you know, yeah. friend group. You know what I mean? And and um, it was just obvious at some point, you know, like these guys. So. Um, I wish she was here. She should tell her <laughs> side of the story, but, um, she, I was giving off signals, I guess. <laughs> Couldn't help it. <laughs> Putting out the vibe. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, she's like, yeah, all right, cool. And she's like, like trying not to like me because I'm an idiot. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, yeah. So anyway. So she heard that I started liking someone else in in this church that was kind of not great. Mm. And she's like, what an idiot. I could never like him. But it, um, which I didn't. Something was misinterpreted to a, a, a mutual friend. And, um, and this girl's like pretty... 
she was messed up and like in it's like the type of thing is if like someone one if your buddy started thinking that hey i'm gonna go after her you'd be like no 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 that's trouble yeah that is trouble so that is kind of one of those things right and and but it took that reaction in her to be like it was like a big reaction like i can't believe you you know it's like yeah. anger you mm -hmm. know what i mean it was like she kind of realized oh, okay think I might be in love with them yeah. and so she went to our leaders like hey what do I do about this and they're basically like well you're both adults <laughs> like if he if he loves Jesus and he does like have a conversation have an adult conversation with him so she actually had to tell me which I will never live down <laughs> so she came to me and she was like hey I like you <laughs> We're on this walk. I like wore this shirt that I knew she liked. <laughs> it's so dumb. Anyway, so she starts when she starts talking, she starts speed walking. I'm like, I'm like, can't keep up with her. I'm like, oh my gosh. So she's like, I, I don't want to mess around. I just, I, she's like speed talking. I don't want to mess around. I just don't want to. I don't want to play any games. I just want you to know. And if you don't like me back, that's okay. And like, I'm like slow down. So I'm like. Uh, so anyway, it took me took her a while to stop talking. I'm like, no, I, I like you. Like, <laughs> yeah, this is cool. Uh, I, what do we do about this? Because I don't know how to date the right way. Yeah, you know what I mean? Anyway, yeah. so so that's what that's what happened. She brought it up, and then um, yeah, we we started dating, and uh, from the point that we started dating till we got married, it was it was um, I think nine months. Mm, yeah, so it, it, it went new. it went fast yeah. and. Talk, yeah, so oh, yeah. that's awesome. That's awesome. I remember when <laughs> Hope and I went on our first date. It's so awkward, and I, you're a Christian, and you don't know how to do it. And I remember we got done, and we're walking to the car, and I, I'm like, so like, yeah, if you hated, like, if you didn't like have fun, and not, you, we never have to talk again. Like, if you don't like, you don't have to like, we don't have to text. You don't have to call me back. Like, we just never have to talk again. And she was like, I, I was gonna see if you wanted to like Facetime this week. <laughs> So, totally. You're like trying to. Yes. Here's a handshake. Yeah. Have a good evening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just dab her up. Uh, no. Sweet. Yeah. So, married row, and then what were you guys? What was your like? Were you serving in the church? Working in the church? Were you like bivocational? Like when did it become like a full time thing for you? Uh yeah. So um I I I was in a band for a little bit and uh, t two of the members were English and they just didn't get their visas renewed. So the band ended like that. It was, mm. they ha they got kicked out of the country. It was a bummer because we were doing pretty good. Um, and then uh, funny enough, um, so uh, Skillet is a part of our churches. They n needed someone to come out um, for a while. It was good. No, I'm just <laughs> Little little band, <laughs> Skrillex. <laughs> the part of Skrillex. <laughs> anyway, so I anyway I, I'm I'm just I'm just I have no plan in my life. I'm just like music, cool. I'll play guitar, cool. It's <laughs> terrible. One of those. Terrible husband. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so so it was actually on the road as that was like. Starting, I had no concept. You played with Skillet. I played with Skillet okay. for for a, a stint of time, um, and as as that time was nearing an end, I felt um, I knew God speaking to me just in my uh, like little bunk area on the bus. Um, I was just spending time with him, just alone, and I I heard him say like, "Write me a song." Mm. I never thought of that. I know that sounds so dumb, but I never thought about it. Like, oh, I'll, I'll write about my life. And obviously Jesus is a huge part of my life, so it comes through and yeah. and and this stuff. But, like, I never thought about, like, writing specifically to. Mm. So I was like, oh, okay. So I wrote a song. And um, and then that – and this is maybe a week later that the tour is over, so I'm back – um, in our churches, and they're like, "Oh man, we need a, uh, we need you to step in on guitar." Um, I'm like, "Okay, cool, yeah." And they're like, "Oh yeah, we're doing these citywide, whatever, like 
joining with some other churches, do some worship stuff, but we need just something fresh. I just don't, we can't find anything. It's like, I was kind of like, uh, I, I wrote a song. You want to, you want to hear my, my song? <laughs> it's so How stupid. Is that? It was really dumb. Like, <laughs> Hey guys, like, I'm the new guy you know, in the back, and hiding in the back. Anyway, it like went over a mate, like mm. way better than I ever thought. And I was like, what? Uh, I just felt like, whoa, that's, that's pretty sick. Um, and, um, it, it, it just like went off from there. I was just, and then in, at that point, like I just spending time on my own. I just felt like God say, all right, you're writing me songs. Mm. You're writing me songs. And it's, and it's for the church, not even for you. Mm. It's for the church. So start writing. I was like, okay. So I just started writing without really an, any agenda, if I could say it that way. And, um, but, um, and then I started leading in our churches and what happened really was other churches in our area were really low on musicians. And so they started asking, Hey, do you have like a worship team that you could like send us? And, um, they'd, they'd be like, no. And I was like, I, I could grab a couple people and go over there and they're yeah. like, okay, cool, cool. Chris, you go do that. This thing like blew up in our town Yeah, and it was like big and i was just using all our own original stuff yeah and um anyway that's how i started like writing and i was at one point people started booking us like what do we call you and i'm like i don't know the, the worship team I'm like no you need a name <laughs> i was like oh so anyway I, it's funny it's like we accidentally became a, a band we well yeah I, you said you were the well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to join? Yeah. Come on in. You don't want to see me on tambourine. Oh, I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I, I don't do, know if I want to hear I it. I only do one song. Arms outstretched. It's the only song I'll do with you. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, yeah, yeah. So sometimes I tell people we accidentally became, became a band. worship band. Yeah. yeah. What and, would you say? Like in that time of like writing songs, learning how to do that, or already having that gift, and like, what was God like showing you about Himself in that time? Like as you were doing that, because I imagine like that's like a deep process of like tapping into like your personal relationship with Christ, probably like some like of your own sufferings and victories and different things like that, and like mm -hmm. bringing them to surface and like offering them as worship, but not only worship from your heart, but then the weight of like this is worship that other people are going to like partake in. Sure. Like what were like some things maybe that he taught you or you learned like in that process of like writing worship music? Yeah, great. Yeah, um, honestly, when when I started when those early days, I had um, I didn't know how to. <laughs> sounds funny, but I didn't know how to write worship. Mm -hmm. I just knew how to write what I felt. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, all I know is that I never want whether I'm you know, in a worship scenario or whether I'm in like a, a like an entertainment scenario, whatever, I don't want to be um, putting it on. Mm. You know what I mean? So whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to just throw myself into it. So whatever lyrics that. I'm going to write, I'm just going to like make sure it's real. Because mm. if someone can know that I'm n not putting it on, I think they'll follow me. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of my, my thought process. So like I'm just going to mean it every single word. So I'm going to like struggle over these lyrics. Yeah. And then I'm just going to write what I feel is like beauty back to God. So so I'm not I don't know if it's like cool. Right. I don't know if it's like in style. It's just what I'm going to create. Mm. So I didn't feel the the pressure or mold to have to sound like anything else necessarily. Right. I was just like I'm just going to like do what I I just want to like whatever it is, I want it to be real. Yeah, And I think it comes back to those places where I got born again. Like I was hit with something of the reality of Jesus yeah. Yeah. rather than the production yeah. of people trying to bring you to Jesus. I think production definitely has its place. Obviously, I work in an industry with lots of production, so I'm not anti-production. But what it has to be mixed, it has to be led with um, he is real yeah. and he's going to change your life and he can do it tonight. Yeah. Like... If I don't believe that stuff, I need to stop. Yeah. You know, but I do believe that stuff. Yeah. I believe yeah. it. 
I can genuinely say I believe it every single time I, I, awesome. I'm up there. So And it's clear. I think that's, I think, why he's, I mean, you can speak to why you've been booking him since 2016 other than he didn't charge you. But no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like, like paid me in cookies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Movers. Yeah. Northern Michigan. Ice cream. Yeah. Uh, I, the authenticity has always been yeah. the, it's always been obvious, which I think has been really good for our, um, our students to see, yeah. um, it helps like create like the culture of worship, like in our, in our student Same. ministry, because it was just like, um, it, to have an example of someone who was like, um, well, this is the first year you've come with your whole band. Mm -hmm. Like it's always just been you and a guitar. And like, um, I think it was so real. And like you, you taught like the students, like how to pray and worship. You taught them how to like, Cool. So to worship through it, how to sing through it. And this, it was just so authentic. And then you'd hop off the stage and you'd be standing at the mud pit or yep. you'd be out there getting in the Coliseum or <laughs> shielding your kid's eyes at fight night back in the day when you're <laughs> eating the crazy stuff. But like you were just in it and like there. Um, and so I, I think it, I know from just student testimony, like it, it really was yeah. like authentic. They yeah. didn't question like, okay, well, Chris is like a rock star. Like it was like, no, Chris is like just real yeah. and this is awesome. 100%. And so that just, it just makes so much sense that you'd say, I was just writing yeah. what was on my heart. Like just, this was, this is what's important to me. Yeah. I think that's what comes to play. Like what I love is just that authenticity aspect and the vulnerability of it of like, guys, I'm a dude that's been born again too. And mm -hmm. like, I'm here with you. Yeah. I'm not like, I'm, I'm, we're doing this together. And I think that aspect of just like one the just the power that you like submit to and then flows from you when you're up there like i think it's just this like very meek like power under control but like you don't hold back and it's just, there's an aspect that like it shows students like this is this is a heart response to christ yeah. that is genuine authentic and real yeah and those are three words that mean the exact same thing and i could have just said one of them but uh, <laughs> 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 but I think like it, like testimony from like Foundry is last year um, you led worship like you always do. You got after it, but I, and you probably don't even remember the conversation with one of our now senior girls, but it, she's like, yeah, I asked him when he started leading worship and he said, I just started doing it. And she's like, can I just start doing it? And she's had this gifting. She's an incredible musician. She's got pipes. And she saw somebody do it like themselves that didn't necessarily look like what she thought church worship was supposed to look like. And she was like, I want to do that. Yeah. And it's, we have two worship teams at both our campuses now that are students. Awesome. And it's like just that authenticity aspect of like, this is who I am. This is who Christ has created me to be. And this is my worship to him for that. Yeah. So I love that aspect of it. And the other night when you sang during the concert, when you sang into your guitar, Dude, I was nuts. ready to charge the gates of hell yes. with squirt guns. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready. Was so cool. Let's go. I literally looked yes. at Adam and he's like, what? <laughs> oh, uh, that's, so, yeah. No, uh, I, I, love I, I love that. So one, one thing that I would be interested to know, just maybe real quick yeah. is, so for you and the spark, and then obviously you've done the touring with the skillet and like, um, you know, the, just <laughs> you've done bigger things. Like music has obviously been such a yeah. big part of your life. It's been something that's like taking you some pretty epic places. How does that translate though to like your mentality towards the local church? Mm -hmm. Like staying plugged mm -hmm. in and like yeah, because that's something you do really well. Like that's something where it's like yeah, you don't. Uh, you seem really grounded, mm -hmm. and like we we just got done saying really authentic. So how does that? I don't know, how do you differentiate the two? Is there a difference? Like, what is it to be part of a local church then in your space? Yeah, great. Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, so, um, as I said before, before I hit yeah. uh, Kenosha, I was, I had no concept of, of um, at least loyalty or belonging yeah. to uh, a family and a family belonging to me. That kind of an idea. Does that make sense? Um, so, I had to learn that. Um, but when I'm reading in the scripture, it seems to me that the main plan is the church mm -hmm. or the plan 
is the church. <laughs> yeah. If I could say it, yeah. it really is that, right? And so um really if if it if it's if we're not connected back to the local church, then um then that's something extra of the plan. And mm. I'm not saying that it's not right, but I would say that um I would say that when I read when I read the New Testament, yeah. It's like the church. Yeah. It's the church. It's not something other than. So, um so I'm super involved in our local church. Yeah. Um when I go back home, I'm full on into our, our local church and what they're doing and I submit my uh I submit myself to my leaders as well. Like I'm not just sort of like only like independent me doing my thing and they're putting up with me like they know I'm here. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Stuff like that. And um but uh but I think that um I just so believe in the local church mm. um and that like it, I love what Paul's saying um these nights where he's like um Jesus is like in it yeah. like one on one yeah yeah and um even though there's crowds he's like talking to people he's yeah. not just talking to a crowd and I think that that's like a pretty important thing to to yeah. remember you know what I mean and like I've got a great evangelist buddy He's he goes and does these ridic I don't even understand this ridiculously huge like stadiums. He sees just so many people come to Christ. But what I love about this dude is um, he'll whenever we get together and we're having like lunch or whatever, he'll just get a prompting in him and he'll stand up and he'll start preaching the gospel and looking for someone to to talk to. I'm like, he's not just doing it on stage in front of the big stadium. Right. He's like ready for the Holy Spirit to prompt him in everyday life. I'm like, man, that is really, um, it like provokes me to be like, am I this way? Yeah. I want to live this way in my local church and I want to do it when I'm outside local church. If there's a big crowd, if there's a little crowd, like that's where God's put me. Like in his sovereignty, like I'm here, so I better be full on into life and not going, man, I wish I was blah blah blah. You yeah. know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So like I, and um, and it's not about me. I'm just an extension of something else. Like, so I think that's a really important aspect as well. Yeah. Like, um, something of what I'm hoping is that what I what I get to do with you guys. It really is a little bit of a piece of really the the family that I come from as well. It's not mm -hmm. just sort of like me. Yeah. And I understand that I'm actually standing on the shoulders of people that have come before me, so I better honor them as yeah. well, you know? So anyway, local church, massively important. It's the family. Like yeah. I belong to them mm. and they belong to me, yeah. you know? Um, and we're not meant to live in isolation, even in ministry. Yeah. We're just not meant to live yeah. that way. So anyway, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like the, the church hopping thing or like the vagabond lifestyle of like churches like that. That's not sustainable. Yeah. That's not no. going to, in the long term, like there's not, yeah, to no. be plugged in, to be connected, to be part of a family like that is, that will push you forward. I think I think it will push you into a deeper relationship with Christ. And yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah, I so good. It. I think it's clear just like your love for like the bride of Christ. So just the, I, I love that about you because I think at the end of the day, like there's no one naive enough to think like if you wanted this to be about you, it could. It could very easily like that you have all the giftings and talent in the world to make it all about you. But knowing that you're like submitted to a local church that completely is communicated through your character. And I think that that's the, that that's like, that's so important for people because like you see like the failures that happen and it's, you cherish it back and there's probably at the end of the day, no spiritual accountability and connection mm -hmm. to a local body of people that are there to check you, to love you, to call you out. Because I know, like, I, I don't even know your lead pastors, but I know that if the road became so important, you started neglecting the needs of your wife and your kids, mm -hmm. somebody would call you out immediately. Definitely. And they have to know me yeah. in order to know if I'm doing well or not. And I love that that our guys do. Right. And um, yeah, so for, for young musicians, so we have a worship school. Yeah. Oftentimes, you know. Tell you them get, about it. People listen. Yeah, okay. So so <laughs> schoolofworship.us, yeah. that's us. And um, 
Um, we, yeah, so we have a worship school. We get have um, people come from all over the world that will come, and there's and it we could we say come? it down. We whittle it down to a small group. We're out. Dry out. <laughs> no, that that was on. how we answered. No, I heard uh, tambourine. <laughs> Together. Tandem. <laughs> Joint. Tandem, tandem, tandem tambourine. I, One tambourine, two wow. hands. As long as there's ribbons attached. <laughs> if there's ribbons Those are at our hips. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Uh, this is going to be a great year. We're going to be interviewing um, as a team. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have no idea where I'm at. Okay. Uh, yeah. So young musicians that will come through and ask us and... Um, there's a few touring musicians that are a part of our churches, so um, it's great that it doesn't come from even mm. just one voice. But one of the things I'll say is the things that uh, that um, being a touring musician is abnormal, and you need to know the call of God on your life in that regard. This would be my opinion. I'll just say that because if you don't, there's a chance you'll be operating not under the umbrella of grace that you're intended to. Mm. And, and I'm, you know, that can get in theological, you know, messiness. But, but what I would say is I have known a lot of musicians and a lot of touring people get into trouble because they're isolated mm. Mm. and they start. And in that isolation, they can go on stage and say something go off stage, live something else, and no one calls them out because they're isolated. Yeah. But we're not meant to live that way. Yeah. We're not. We're meant to be connected. Like the the reason, you know, we're called a body for a reason. So like that bot, that elbow, does, like it doesn't cease to be an elbow, right? Just because it's isolated. But the truth is like it can't function the way that it's meant to. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it has to be. And that's where it's, you're going to, so anyway, whether, so even with musicians, I'm like, you just got to, like, you got to know the voice of God. And I'd say that with anybody. Yeah, 100%. Um, but yeah, so. I love that. And I think it's important for husbands, for wives, for students, for anybody seeking to follow Christ and maintain a life that he's called you to is being in a community of believers is important. Mm -hmm. So that's not, if you're listening to this, it doesn't just apply to those that have a platform. No. But being somebody who's completely submitted to the authority of Christ yeah. uh, in and through his local church is so crucial to longevity in your faith because it's people that can be there with you. Because it's not just the rebuke, right? It's the restoration. It's the people that are sitting in the hospital with you. It's the ones that show up. And uh, I think that there's just so much value to the body. And I love that you're pointing to that mm. um, because I think that it shows in the fruit of your life mm. is that you're submitted to, like, I know nothing about your church, but I know it's a healthy one just based off my experience with you. Mm. And uh, and so I love that aspect of it. So, yeah, man, thank you so much just for coming and being a part of this. Yes. Um, it was a ton of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Got us out of yeah. wreck time. <laughs> <laughs> just it's kidding. My, we, my were yeah, oh, we were already in the mud pit. Yeah, we mud pit today already, so it was you disgusting. Earned it. You it earned was, it. <laughs> It was afterwards that Andrew told me, yeah, I had to shoo a bunch of geese off of here. <laughs> it was in the oh, goose no. pond. Uh, so, oh. <sighs> That's, yeah, I, but your that's kids, not just your, mud. Your kids didn't. <laughs> your, it was just us. Just one on one mud pit. <laughs> oh. Uh, so, no yeah. purpling and no the mud pit. Yes. That you're about to get. Oh, 100%. Good thing I don't have service. <laughs> um, yeah, hey, and if you're listening to this and you heard some noise in the background, that's just nine square because we are live at camp. So. Um, yeah. Chris, man, thank you so much. And I, I, we do this with an, a majority of our Change Life stories. Is there one thing? that you'd want to leave our listeners with um, as they go. Um, some of them are listening to this right now, getting out of their car. Um, mm -hmm. They're in the middle of a workout. Um, they're a stay-at-home mom doing chores. Um, they're a college student cranking out homework. Like, is there any one thing that you'd want to leave with them as they go? Um, man, that makes your head spin. What do you want to say? <laughs> um, this is what I'd say. I'd say that... Um, like Jesus is real and whether you're in a place that this is fresh information or you've known it your whole life, but if it's gotten stale, just know that like his freshness can be real right now if you run to him right now. Mm. And if that's the case, I would just say like, um, 
like he can meet you, change the trajectory of wherever you're at, or he'll be your piece in the turmoil of the, of wherever you're at right now. So I would just say, if you have gotten to a place where you have lost the, if I can go back to authenticity, Mm. if I will, of your faith, just know that all it takes is like true turning back to him and you can know something of the refreshment of Jesus. It's just, he's real. So he does what he says that he's going to do in his word. So anyway, that's what I would say. Mm. Yeah, man, man. That's awesome. awesome. Drew? It's good stuff. Keep it pushing. Yeah, we'll just keep rocking. Keep doing Almost the done. thing. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate it, man. Uh, Tab family, um, if you're listening to this and you work at the Dublin store, um, we love you, but uh, no free shout outs. Dublin store. I've been trying to get sponsorships for two and a half years. Uh, so <laughs> I just randomly plug places that I know nice. might listen to this. Uh, and brats would be nice, huh, Maddie? We like brats. We like brats. You can drop them by the Manistee <laughs> or the Buckley campus. What's up, Mundos? Uh, no free shout outs. Mundos? Mundos. Uh, no free shout outs. I've given them my life savings. <laughs> hey, actually, Mundos, if you're listening to this, if you don't bring the cheddar lime waffle back, I'm going to start protesting. <laughs> All right, the burrito's good, but we want the waffle. All right, right. Mundos, you can't have a good thing and throw it away. We need the waffle. Yeah, it's, I mean, Psalm 46 was clear that we need to taste and see that the word is good, and Mundos is hindering that by taking the (laughs) waffle away. So if you want to stop being heretics over at Mundos, get the cheddar lime waffle back. And we're losing it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Uh, Sonic, come on up. Hey, North of the Sonic Mason coming to Northern Michigan would be crazy. Come on, Brahms. Do we have a Sonic in Grand Rapids? There's one in Grand Rapids, yeah. You want to go right now? <laughs> Probably on your way home. What? I think it home? is. It would. Uh, yeah. I don't know where we're at, so maybe. Do you go down to Grand Rapids? Usually. Through Chicago? Yeah. Oh, you don't UP it? No. No, because Kenosha, Kenosha's like further down. I don't know right. where anything yeah. is. I don't know where we are right now. <laughs> <laughs> what day is it? <laughs> this episode's brought to you by Mountain Dew Baja Blast. <laughs> <laughs> no free shout outs. <laughs> Till next time, to have family. <sighs> Maddie, you're awesome. Andrew, you're all right. Chris, you rock. We Sweet. love you, Tab family. Until next time, this is Britain signing off.